What's going on people? Welcome back to another video. My name is Suzy and you're watching 90 More. Back again with the breaking news for that air. So hope you're all doing well. Make sure you're subscribed if you're new and drop the video a damn like if you breathe oxygen. But for now, let's get down to business. Fortification squad gang 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 in the building. Love to your mothers. Hope you're doing well. <sighs> what a day. Beautiful day of football today. We have had two games. We're going to do two separate videos, Sheffield United against Tottenham. But first, I'm going to start, we're doing it backwards, I know. We're going to start with Manchester City against Liverpool, the Premier League final. The champions against last year's winners. Two of the best teams that football has ever put together, if we're honest. And for me, a crucial moment, not a meaningless game where the title was over and nothing was at stake. Everything is at stake. Pride is at stake. The future is at stake. Competition between these two is at stake. Rivalries galore. And yeah, the guard is what started it all, really, isn't it? The guard of honour. It's not really controversial. It's tradition. Something that the players should be used to, or at least the idea of. And I don't know why so many people have had a problem with it, but it's respect for your superior. That's what it is. You're showing respect to your superior because this season, Liverpool have been Manchester City's superior. However... Not only did the City players not show much respect, it was a bit of sour grapes, wasn't it? Walking away early. And I don't blame them. That shows that it meant something. And it's kind of like a victory for Liverpool in a way. Because it's like they have reacted. And by reacting, Liverpool have won. But had they underestimated how much City are hurting... Had they underestimated the quality that they were up against? Or were they just hung over from a piss-up and celebrating their 30-year wait? I mean, they would have been entitled to, right? I would not have minded if Liverpool had turned up and walked around. And they may as well have done, really, because as much as the game was very competitive, a 4-0 thrashing is what I'm calling that, and it could have been, and perhaps should have been 5. I didn't hear the commentary. I was listening to it silent, but... Uh, the handball that the last goal has been disallowed for is coming off Phil Foden, who was in the process of being fouled by Fabinho, no? I'm very confused about that. Maybe someone in the conversation below can tell me exactly what went on. But today, a new lease of life for football for me, as a neutral fan watching two of, like I said, the best to ever do it, I appreciate what Pep has done for this game in this country. And you have to appreciate what Klopp's done now as well. But in terms of the style of play, they are a beautiful kind of counterbalance of each other. Right? One is much more graceful. One is much more aggressive and physical. One is straight to the point. Another will take its way to get around. But beautiful seeing the tactical masterclasses from both of these managers over the last God knows how long we've been blessed with them in this country. And the hope is that Pep hasn't given up yet and wants to come back for more. That's what I want to see. I want to see a response. And today we saw a response. We saw an energetic Pep Guardiola on the sidelines. And for Liverpool, I wouldn't even be that upset. That might be just what you needed. A reality check. Yes, European champions. Yes, Club World Cup champions. Yes, Premier League champions. And the job's not done there. The job carries on. This is the beauty of football. It doesn't stop, mate. You can have your little holiday and whatnot, but realise that competition is back. Manchester City will mean business. Kevin De Bruyne was the best player on the pitch and surely deserves player of the year. It's such a mad one, isn't it? You're either giving that to Van Dijk or De Bruyne. I'm sorry, it's one of those two. But I don't want to hear about Henderson. No, Henderson has been incredible for Liverpool. But has he made the difference like Van Dijk has? But anyway, a wake-up call for Liverpool. And surely Jurgen Klopp would have been going mental at these players in the dressing room. You think you can win the title and have this club's history torn down in fucking shatters after 24 hours, the glory's gone? No, that's not how it works. You're supposed to be back proving it. Proving that you're better than this Manchester City side. 4-0! 4-0! Maybe even 5 no, 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 no. Words. Everyone training. First thing tomorrow morning. First thing tomorrow morning training. Extra hours for everybody. Laps. I don't 
care if you've won the title. That winner's mentality will definitely be instilled and they'll be hurting tonight. They'll be at least thinking, no, 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 no. That's not how that was supposed to go. You're not trying to tell me that Liverpool didn't put out a strong side. They did. But what was the difference between this? Yes, you can give me the excuse of hangovers and piss-ups and celebrate. Oh, I'll allow you that. That's fair enough. You are entitled to have a drink after you've done a season of busting nuts. However... Manchester City's main problems this season for me have stemmed from a lack of debatably the best centre-back in the league. The best partnership that you could possibly create in this Premier League right now is Van Dijk and Laporte. And Laporte today was babysitting. He was babysitting. He had a little kid next to him, taking him everywhere. Cleaning up after him. All the mess that he keeps leaving. Every fucking little crumb of peas and all the shit that I keep feeding you, you're dropping it on the floor. I'm wiping up after you. Yeah? Garcia, young, great potential. I mean, physically, you can tell he's just a, a touch off the pace. And Liverpool were trying to capitalise on that, but Laporte looked after him well. And I tell you what, he's a top player. Wow. It goes without saying. But if they have a full-strength side, Manchester City... If Sane or a replacement is available, because remember, Sane is getting 25 assists over two seasons. That's a hell of a lot. Double figures in goals as well, baby. Please, please. These are 50 million, actual 50 million pound players who have serious impact goals, assists, work rate, pace, all of it. The space that Sane can open up alone creates problems. So if you add another wide man, or the introduction of Phil Foden, who's absolutely superb. Criminal. Oh, oh, get this boy in the England squad right now. Get him in the England squad. In the team. Build the team around top ballers like this. If you have played for Liverpool or Manchester City over the last two to three seasons, and you are English, I want to see your name in the squad, okay? That's it. I don't want to hear any debates. I don't want to hear any fucking arguments. If you have been a member of that first team squad... As in, you're either first 11, 12th man, first 15. Well, listen, you've got to be in the England squad, bro, because these guys have elevated. These two teams here, they put the rest of the league to shame. And I know that it's money and there's a lot of, you know, other factors. But in all seriousness, the levels are so very different. They're so very different. Oh, wow. Let's talk about it. Kevin De Bruyne. I've lost count of how many assists he's got. It must be 18 or 19, which would equal Meza Ozil's best in the Premier League. He's one short of Thierry Henry. That would mean on 20. And I guess two short of becoming the most creative player in Premier League history. He's level with the likes of Frank Lampard, Cesc Fabregas. This is big boy names. And... You've got to appreciate what he does. He understands football like not many players ever will. I'll be honest with you. He just, he just got it. He just got it. He gets it and he puts it there where you want it. And as a striker, he must be a fucking dream. Wow. If you're a striker and you've played with Kevin De Bruyne and you're not getting a, a hell of a lot of goals, you need to have a look at yourself, mate, because you, you might not be in the right line of work. All right? Anyhow, 4-0. Could have been 5. Mara's good finish. Alisson. I never thought I'd see this. You can see him 5, bro. Really, I'm not, I'm not. I'm counting the last one. Mario's good finish. Near post, though. Ooh. Next season is what it's all about now. Who can City sign? Can Liverpool hang on to all their players? Will Klopp have the same... Will those players have the same hunger, having won everything? They have completed football, lads. And today, I think that that was good for them. That would have been a kick up the arse to say, you're not done. And if you are, we're ready. In waiting. They'll want revenge. Sterling, you could see how much it meant to him. Oh, people were talking about the guard of honour. Yep, we did that. Now let's get down to business. What a game. Beautiful. I love the chaos, the drama. And I love ambition. Right? I love the fact that even though they've done this already, they don't need to do this again. They want to go again. They want to do it bigger and better. Or at least they wanted to prove a point today that, yes, you won the league in exceptional circumstances. We've basically never seen anything like that. The winning streak, certainly never seen anything like that. And we may never again. None of Europe's top five leagues have ever seen a start like that. But let's not forget City. 
They talk about this Liverpool side like they're one of the greatest and they should be in the conversation. So should this City side. Today was confirmation of that. Laporte, welcome back. Big fan of the kid. Wow. I mean, bossy, classy, elegant on the ball. Pass master. Long, short temperament. <sighs> he got it all. And then, you know, they're bringing on £50 million substitutions. Replacements. Direct £50 million replacements. Carl Walker coming off for Cancelo. I mean, these are the type of substitutions that have made people think they should have won the Champions League by now. And boys, they may still well. That would put a spanner in the works for UEFA, wouldn't it? Let me know your thoughts in the conversation below. Is this a minor blip for Liverpool? Should we use the excuse they don't need to play for anything anyway? Or was today a sign that it's back on tomorrow? I say tomorrow, next season, which is right around the corner. Let me know your thoughts in the conversation below. Subscribe if you're new and drop the video a damn like if you breathe oxygen. But for now, my name's been Hugh Izzy and this has been, Jesus, the dark streets of London with crackers following me and all that. Mad.